What am I doing? I'm working on the sail drives, guys. But, uh, they've actually been protected pretty damn well. Um, I put an epoxy barrier coat and then anti-foul on them. And looks like everything's been protected really well. It's actually really hard to get it off. Uh, but this time I'm actually going to use the proper system with the uh, spray paint for the um, sail drives and with the props. So I need to get everything back to bare aluminium and yeah, then we can uh, paint them up. More so with the sail drives, I'm going to be changing the water seal. The water, so basically this is like a prop shaft in here. And there's a little seal that protects the oil and the water. So I'm going to change that one out and then we should be good to go. Continuing on with the sail drives. I cleaned this one up, yes, they got it back to bare aluminium. Um, so just got the prop off, it actually came off a lot easier than last time. That's good. So that's better. So the zincs, they're actually not in that bad a condition, but we'll put new ones on. We have but, new ones? No, we don't, we're gonna have to get some. They might have some in the store here. Um, but behind here, I need to dis disconnect all of this lot here so I can get the shaft out so I can change the water seal and change all the oil. So. I've got a feeling, if I remember rightly from the Dominican Republic, on this sail drive to get this part off, I think there is a broken stud. Ooh. Um, not from me, it was like that before, but that's one of the reasons why I stopped in the Dominican. Right. So I didn't because have to be able to get spare get parts and etc, etc. And there wasn't, any, there wasn't any water in the oil, so we just left as it was. Um, but anyway, while we're here, US stateside, let's get this done. So, so hang on, done. how long has it been since the oil has been changed in the sail drive? We've never changed it. Well, you've done partial changes. I've done partial changes because with the SD20s that we've got, um, the drain plug is here at the bottom. So obviously you can't change all of the oil while you're in the water. And from the top where you can check, you can add oil to it or you can um, just check the levels. Um, that bit there, if you, you can't even put an oil extraction tube like very far down. So you can only change, I'd say, Maybe top a third. quarter or top third or the top quarter of oil. So I've done that several times coming through the Bahamas, get it all warmed up and then change out like a quarter or a third. Um, but that's not the way because the heavy deposits in oil obviously will always sit at the bottom. So it is time to change the oil in these guys as well. <laughs> How's that go? Yeah, the zincs are a little bit more. They've been in the water since Dominican. Yeah. It's really not that bad. There's still a lot of meat on. I'll keep them as spares in case something happens because these are actually changeable underwater. You just have to take the prop off. No, you can actually do it without taking the prop oh, off. Oh, really? Yeah, because these are the horseshoe ones. So they're oh, split shit. two parts. Um, you can buy these as solid ones, which can't be changed without taking the prop off, or these horseshoe ones, which can. Let's take a look closely at those. There's still quite a bit of meat in them. <laughs> but we'll be putting new ones on. There's crud in there. So much crud up in there. Yeah, I need to get up there and clean that out too. We just don't have the boots anymore. No, we've never had the boots. Everyone says the boots are just trouble anyway. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's the other side because it looks like all my nuts are actually in place here on this side. So it must be the other sail drive. I was sure it was this one. That's why I started on this one because I thought I'd get the trouble one out of the way. Oh well, I've started this one. We shall continue with this one. How do you do it? Oh. That didn't turn. <laughs> nope. What do you need? I need to undo this screw. Do so you need a bigger screwdriver? No. Or is that the biggest one we got? This is the biggest one we got and it's, it's the right size. Thank you. 
Nope. He sounded like Kermit the Frog. Nope. Nope. Do with an impact driver. Don't have one of them. We don't? No. I thought we have an impact driver. Oh no, that's the impact drill. I'm talking about one that's got the head on it with the with the slot and you hit it, as you hit it, it turns at the yeah. same time. But we don't have one of them. There's another way. You just open the whole front and the oil will come out that way. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. I don't know what I look like. You look fine. I look grubby. Right, look I've been great. cleaning the anchor locker. My hair is a mess. Oh, it's you that keeps getting the anchor locker dirty <laughs> anyway. Um, so we just had a guy come on board um, and he's doing all the measurements for the stainless steel work for the hard top. So fingers crossed we can afford it. We're getting a price tomorrow. Yeah, and, it's a different uh, guy than what we got the quote for in Stuart. So I know we had mentioned that before and that quote was six grand. So hopefully this is slightly less. Hopefully. Um, but yes. he seems really easy very, going. Very knowledgeable. He knows his stuff. Um, but he's going to come back to us tomorrow and give us a quote. Um, and then we're going to get started on the metalwork. So yeah. we're super excited for this. I know well, you we've got guys to tack are. It. We've got to tackle the pieces of metal up first. So once all that's done, he can take them away, weld them up properly. Um, I can then drop this hard top, finished foaming it and finish fiberglass in it, which I know a lot of people have been waiting for this to be done. It's taken a very long time. Yeah. So, um, fingers crossed guys. Let's see what happens over the next few days. Exciting times. Very. So this one here, I've had a good play with it. Um, sanded it all back. Um, I have put a little bit of paint on it as well. Um, and I've had all this unit apart and I've changed the water seals inside. So what we're gonna do, is do a little bit of a how-to. I'll chuck this, this uh, camera on a tripod and let's work on this one i haven't worked opened this one up yet i've just loosened the knot on the end i've got some pb blaster on all my little nuts and bolts and i've done a bit of the sanding as well because i wanted to check she was still in good condition before i serviced it so let's bang this out shall we should we crack on do a bit of a service all right so let's break down this sd20 sail drive as i said i've already cracked one of the nuts here anyway did that yesterday it's, uh, See if the uh, PB blast has been uh, been doing its job. Oh. Right, we're gonna have to wedge the prop. Nothing, one more nut there that I didn't see. Yep. Now the props that we've got are not in the best of condition. This one looks better than the other side, not as much pitting, but we have managed to get a couple of props of our neighbors and that's actually quite interesting the zincs on this side are in a hundred percent perfect condition whereas the other side port side they were actually in quite poor condition so there must be some stray current on the opposite side that's where we've got all the batteries and everything interesting do a bit of research on that So I've got a bit of crud in this one here. I'm gonna to have to find a way to get something out there. So let's just pause this camera a minute and see if I can clean up that hole. All right, so I got that one out. It was just a little bit of crud in the bottom there. Um, now these are the two main fixing bolts and this whole aluminium plate here, which holds the, uh, the drive shaft, if you will, um, that will come forward. Now, normally if this was just a normal service, I would actually be draining the oil from underneath here, but I don't think there's any reason for me to actually disturb that plug. I know it's sealed, I know it's good. 
and to change the water seals all the oil is going to come out of here anyway so i've got a bucket with the oil from the other side so i'm going to crack these and then move that forward let the oil come in to this section Ready for the oil? That's thick, nasty oil. It hasn't been changed for a very long time. Okay, so I've got this part on the bench. This is obviously the drive shaft. Um, so in here, you'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five little bolts. I need to separate this from the aluminium housing because it's actually in here up against the shaft where there is the double water seals. And I've got two more upstairs ready to go for this job. So let's just crack these open first. So that there, in there, there is two water seals. I actually thought there was just one per unit, but luckily I bought six of these things because I'm actually I'm gonna end up using two per sail drive. So luckily I've got a spare set. So if we do have a problem, I could always beach the vessel and um, redo this um, just on like a short haul, if you will, just by popping up on a beach at high tide, wait for the tide to go out. So anyway, I've got to press these guys out, clean everything up, reassemble it with new parts. Alrighty guys, so we had a little bit of a technical issue there with the cameras. Unfortunately, GoPros used to be the kitty. These days they seem to just Might freeze up or the batteries say they're dead even when they're 70%. Might need to switch to the Insta 360. We, we may be, it. maybe. Uh, but anyway, enough of my little rant there. Um, everything takes 10 times longer when you're trying to film it. So what I've done and what you missed, so the inside here, there is two water seals. They're both pressed in from this side in, both, in opposite directions. So you missed me just banging them out. All I literally did was tap them out. I cleaned the surface with a little bit of wet and dry and I've pressed in two new ones. Um, everything else has been cleaned up as well. So all the bearings and everything else ready to go back in has all just been nicely um, touched up with just it's like 600 grit uh, wet and dry ready for this to put back together. So it's all been lubricated. So I'm gonna pop this back in. Look at that. Slides back together. Now, if I remember from the other one, I need to back it off ever so slightly. Why? So that I can get the bolts in. So line these little suckers up. There are two more. I'm missing a bolt. There it is. No, there's not two more. It looks like there's supposed to be two more, but it's dirty. We don't want to put dirt in there. Ooh. Yeah, one more. One more. One more. One more. Yeah, one of them's just a free hole. That one there is just actually a free hole. It doesn't bolt down to anything. So that looks like the trickiest bit. Yeah, it's getting these nut, these little bolts back in. All right, so quickly got this one back on here. It's blowing a little bit of a storm and it's a bit like a, a sandstorm at the moment in here. So I got this on nice and quick, kept it nice and clean and uh, everything's sealed back up. So this one's ready for paint, but I'm not gonna paint it today. I've got the paint ready to go, but with all this, it's gonna end up with so much sand in it. It's not gonna be very good. So I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit more, degrease it, get it ready, and put all the parts back on. And then uh, I think we'll do some paint tomorrow morning when it's nice and quiet. Lollipop stick. Holy crap.
Another day in the bookyard. What day number is this? I'm losing track. Oh, maybe these props don't fit. Other way. No, it goes on that way. Oh, they do. I always miss the line. So these are the props from our next door neighbors. Oh, we filming already? Yeah. Alrighty. So good morning, good morning. So at this time while uh, doing all the servicing, obviously you've seen that I've changed the oils, changed the water seals, put it all back together. Um, and this time with the coating that I've decided to go with it, um, I tried a spray can from Petit, um, which was a sail drive and outboard drive um, spray can, but it just wouldn't come out the can. So I've returned that to the store. We've got a local fiberglass store up the road here. I returned that one. We tried two cans, just didn't work. I presume the particles got stuck in the nozzle or something and I couldn't get it cleaned up. So we've sanded it all back again and then they've recommended a different product. What's this one called again? Super Slide. Super Slide or Super Slime or something like that. Or find the, find the tub in a minute. It's, a, it's basically epoxy, um, but it leaves a super, super slick finish to it. Now this one here, I've just actually sat, I've done one coat and I've sanded it back and it still feels super slick, even though I put a key on it. Um, so we're going to put a second coat of that one. I'm going to do it in white. And we've actually managed to get some replacement props from our next door neighbors over on Erie Cat. Thank you very much. Because um, on one of our props, we had a lot of pitting. And I think that's probably got to do with the fact that I put epoxy barrier coat on these last time and then put the anti-foul paint on. But the anti-foul paint is copper based and copper and aluminum, they don't like each other. It eats into it. <clears throat> and I must have missed a little bit with the epoxy barrier coat or it came off when I did some scraping. So this time we're not going to put any of the anti-fouling on. We're just going to leave this one product. Uh, one more coat of this. It should look lovely and shiny. I've just got a little bit more sanding to do just for the end cones. So that's my project for this morning. Get these bad boys finished. The product that we used on... Oh, that's sticky. Yeah. <laughs> the product that we used on the props is called Super Slick. And um, two part, it's a two part epoxy mix, so 50 50 ratio. And uh, Erica, so when I did it, it goes on a little bit thick um, because I was using a brush and I think I let it go on a little bit too thick. So, what we've decided, even though I've done two coats, which is enough, it's not perfect. So, Erica's gonna jump in there, give it a light sanding, get rid of those little runs, and, and then, then put one more coat on using a, they... a roller so it goes yeah. on nice and thin, eh? And then uh, that should be that, another ticket you can take off the wall, isn't it? Yeah, and then the zincs will be here today and we can finish up those sail drives completely. So I don't know if you can see. Oh, there's some runs. I think for the bigger bits, where's that paper? I think for the bigger bits, if I remember rightly, because it ran on the first one as well. Yeah, that gets rid of the nobules. Yeah, we'll have a bit of a workout there. Hey, right. this is my job. That's fine. My job. So this stuff is a very slow cure, you said? Mm hmm And you're putting a white pigment in it? Mm-hmm. Why white, not black? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> This stuff is quite cool though, because once it actually goes on, it makes the surface super slimy. So it's like nothing's gonna stick to it. Think thin, but coverage. So for the zincs for the sail drive, I know Davey said something about red and blue, but I don't know if he said 
blue Allen keys or red Allen keys or blue Loctite or red Loctite. So I had to bring them all down. <laughs> All right, I am actually here, guys, but you came and explained this and we thought we'd get it on camera. So, with the, the little locking nut that goes on the end of the cone for the back of the uh, sail drive, I recommend that we put the blue on, because that means it can still be undone with a hammer with a little bit of force. Not a hammer, sorry, a spanner with a little bit of force. I think most of you guys call them wrenches, not spanners. Yeah. Um, instead of the red, because if you use the red lock tie, I think most of you will probably already know that you have to heat it up first to get it, the damn thing undone. And if we need to change the prop for any reason underwater, heat gun doesn't work too well down there. And then it was the... And I think it's the red ones that fit those. I so think, it's think that means I'm glad I brought both, because yeah. chances are it's a 50-50 shot between which one. Chances are I'm right, let's find out. So there's the old zincs. They're actually, these are the ones I saved because they're in pretty good condition. Here's the old ones. They go on like so. Versus the new ones. Was I right? Was it the blue? I'm glad I brought both. I'm not 100% sorry. Yeah, it might be this one. It was blue. <laughs> Damage is right. So blue and blue. Blue and blue. Blue and blue all the way. All right, now you can put your cell drives back together. I do. Training Erica up to be a mechanic and an engineer. So what we need, then I don't have to do it all. Look at that. So the zincs are now on. Um, I know we mentioned that we got new props from our neighbors and that's because they're going fully electric. So stay tuned in some upcoming videos as we show you that transformation. <laughs> And look at that, one sail drive. And that's not on the end. Rebuild. All right, minus the locking nuts, sail drive complete. <laughs>